us that you would like to share? Or maybe you have a question about the Bible. Here's an opportunity for you to share your request or get biblical answers. Stay tuned for a live call-in program entitled Prayer and Answers. Good afternoon and welcome to Prayer and Answers. I hope that you even... Uh, though we have so much wind out there I hope you are having a wonderful Saturday and that all is well with your soul today let me pull up my calendar here so I can give the date so folks will know that we're live and they can call in it is March the 11th which means tomorrow it's daylight savings time hallelujah that's one less hour of sleep that we have to put up with so well I, I'm not, so there's a lot of people that don't like daylight savings oh, my time. My wife is uh, one of the worst. <laughs> I, I kind of like it. I, okay, okay. And then, so the reason I like it is now we get one more hour of daylight in the evening. Yeah. And, and, right. When and, you said you liked it. Yes. I've, I've been married, what, 36 years. I mm -hmm. heard my wife say something that I'm not going to repeat out loud. I heard her say it in my in my head. Yes. And she's, what, five miles away, and I heard her. And so, uh, but you like it. You're the first person I've ever met that likes it. Yeah, because I like another hour of daylight at no, night. I don't care. I do. I, um, I uh, for me, uh, the in the spring, and we, we wake up an hour early to me, it's like, okay, I got that hour in the bank, and this autumn, I'm going to get that back. <laughs> so... So it's to me, it's like a day, it's like an hour savings account. So, no. so I don't care either way. Anyway, maybe we should introduce ourselves. I'm Randy Smith, and uh, and I get the privilege of hosting this this hour of call of prayer requests and maybe biblical questions you might have. And with me, the other voice you just heard, Doctor Steve Kovac. And so, Steve, how are you today? I'm doing pretty good. All right, good. And. Uh, and that is what we're here for. We're here to take your prayer requests. And uh, as you as you bring your prayer request, it tends to minister to other folks out there. And then and while we're praying for you, they'll they'll be praying for you as well. And and uh, God answers prayers. So don't you know what? Don't just suffer through with these things. Just go ahead and let's take them to the Lord together and we'll pray for him for them and see see what he will do. He says that we are to cast all our cares upon him because he cares for us. So the phone number here is 915-779-0016. And Steve, why don't you tell them about our open line policy and Bible question issues? Okay. So you're talking about the general purpose of the yeah, show? Yeah. I got the so, prayer part. Yeah. So I want to sip on my coffee. So, so. so the purpose of the show is is not for us to talk. The purpose of the show is for us to answer questions and, and to go to the Lord in prayer with your prayer requests. Um, there's all kinds of shows that you have on KELP and other stations that you can listen to very good preaching and, uh, and uh, people will... Uh, learn a lot from those shows and, and they're very valuable but they're targeted and they're pre-recorded and now you get to hear it but we're here live right and and so it's it's it, we're here live to answer your questions we're here live to hear your prayer requests so that we can pray for you pray for god's people um it doesn't have to be your prayer request it could be your concern for uh, our country your concern for um, uh, your family, you're concerned um, for uh, um, the city of El Paso. Um, uh, what what are you, what is it that uh, you want prayer for? And uh, we we should pray pray together. And, and God is at work in answering prayer because the uh, um, the prayer of a righteous person is is powerful uh, and effective. And um, and really the word there, uh, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. That's from James chapter 5, verse 15. It, it, it has the connotation that God, God works through your prayer, and, and he really does. All right. So having said that, let's uh, do a demonstration on how it works since we've already got a caller on the line. So everybody watch closely. This is kind of how we do it. Good afternoon. Welcome to Prayer and Answers. Good afternoon. What happened to good afternoon, Mariva? Well, it okay. Time change? No, it's not the time change. And Steve, Steve said, Steve said maybe you should tell him ahead of time what's going on. And I said, no, we'll just wing it. So the computers. <laughs> well, he did tell me. 
Yeah. You can tell me. I'm sorry. I don't yeah. want to give you a hard time. Okay. Yeah, our computer's down, so I'm gonna gonna answer the phone and 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 welcome you to prayer and answers, and then go. Oh, by the way, who is this? But now okay. I know it's Minerva. <laughs> what's on What's oh, on well, your mind? I I love your jokes, Randy, but I have to side with Steve. I love the time change. That one hour, I am so happy to see some more sunlight. Mm. So I am the same way. I love the sunlight. By the time I get home, my wife is going to be going, what is wrong with these people? <laughs> oh. Well, I do like your jokes, too. So, okay. But yeah, it's a tough one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I have a question for you guys. I have, uh, what's the update on the revival that was going on? I haven't heard. All right, so let's talk about that for a moment. That's a good, uh, okay. that's a good question. And so um, because it's a small town and they had 50,000 uh -huh. visitors, they were saying, let us um, end the service. But the great um, desire was for, uh, the, for the revival to carry on in folks' hearts and wherever the Lord wanted it to go. And I'm glad you asked that question because I was reading an article on it and, and uh, I had some thoughts about it I want to share, okay? Okay. Um, in, in revivals, what happens is there's this wonderful experience and this move of God and people have the same concern. It is, I don't want to come off of the mountaintop. And, uh, right. and, and this is so wonderful. And, you know, it's kind of like Peter when they were on the mountain with Jesus at the transfiguration. And he goes, let's let's build some tents here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. I, I don't want to come back off the mountaintop. Meanwhile, down in the valley, what was waiting was a demon-possessed boy and a crowd of people that needed to be ministered to. And right. so there is a common, how do, we, how do we keep this, and a desire. But I think where the error is, Minerva, um, they're, they're equating that revival with this feeling, this experience, which is beautiful. The presence of God is so amazing. And they're saying, I wish we could keep this. But what's supposed to be happening and what, what happens, what sh generally happens in a true revival is the person is changed forever. And so mm -hmm. you, you, you don't, it, it would be like, you know, when, when Jesus heals the blind person, the blind person doesn't go, well, how do I keep this feeling? Well, it doesn't matter about the feeling. What matters is I'm not blind anymore. Exactly. And so the purpose of revival is to change you from where you were. You were with your back to God or maybe a little bit distanced from Him. The Holy Spirit calls and draws, and you find yourself close to God, and suddenly your heart is filled with this wonderful experience. And it is wonderful, but the important part is not about the feeling, but the, the translation of where you were to where you are now, and that never need go away. Exactly. Got it. And yeah, we need to take it with us wherever exactly. we Exactly. The, the 50,000 yeah. people who were there or that traveled from other places, they're not going to live there. They're not going to build tents. And uh, but if oh, if they re, if they repented and they you know, they 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 changed some things in their lives and they were changed, all you have to do is keep those changes in place and not lose the change. And it's our emotions don't keep those changes in place our determination and our right. faith does right 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 absolutely well put so let us Thank you. let us do this Minerva while I have you here yes sir. would you pray that God would do something here in El Paso as far as bringing people into a closer relationship with him which is that's where life is would you Amen. would you pray that that God would bless us by by calling us and that people would hear and they would repent and uh, enter into into a wonderful life would you give us a prayer for that yes okay. i will um dear lord we ask you that you move in our hearts and give us the strength and the words to minister to people so we ourselves can touch others and introduce your word we know that our job is to plant a seed whether they accept it or not it there's others that will come along and water that seed but give us the strength to not be embarrassed or to not feel self-conscious and to go out and to pre to minister to people your word lord jesus in hopes that we can plant a seed and introduce you 
and that they will eventually accept salvation. We ask this in your name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. One other statement I'd like to make about revival. It's not for the lost. It's, revival is for the saved. People might get saved. Lost people might get saved. But revival that's, is, is mostly for the saints. And uh, Amen. That's, what, that's what we need is for the church in El Paso, the individuals, to, uh, yes. to leave the world and draw closer to God, right? Uh, yes, and you know, one more thing that I think we need is, like, I really enjoy your show, and I, I, I'm, I didn't know you guys have, were on for so long. I wish I had found it sooner. But I think that we need people to, you know, step out of our comfort zone mm -hmm. and call in yeah. because the calls are absolutely amazing. I mean, there was, I've heard calls of, I wish I'd said that, or I was too, when, before I called, mm -hmm. I was too embarrassed to call. But another caller called in and talked about what I was feeling, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm not alone. Other, other people need to hear what I am hearing and so I encourage everybody to call because it's such a blessing when people call and you hear the calls and we pray it's wonderful so I think we need to be more um, open minded and not be so shy because mm. we should not be shy sure yep giving credit to our God okay okay thank you Minerva thank you gentlemen you guys bye -bye. have a good one God bless you guys bye bye Steve had you heard anything else on uh on the Asbury revival? No, um, I really haven't. Um, I haven't been keeping up much lately. But um, what normally, uh, so the idea is people are going to other, uh, so what happens is many times people who are, who are part of the, uh, the revival go to other churches or in this case often universities mm -hmm. and give testimonies and sometimes it spreads and in that way and I've heard stories of some of this spreading uh, in, in, in a smaller sense but I haven't really been keeping up but I know that God is going to use it as they not only it, it renews their life but they can testify and ask God to do a, a piece of a, a work in, in other places as well okay uh, well I, I read a wonderful article that I think that actually helped me um, with that last answer by the way just um and so I want to give folks the name of it. You can Google it, and uh, and then you can read it. It was it was uh, sent out on March third by a man named Kent Dunnington. And so it's uh, it's called Gratitude and the Asbury Revival by Kent Dunnington. Uh, and so if you Google that, it'll take you to a place called First Things. And he has a wonderful little um, uh, blog there. Uh, yeah, I, I subscribe to that magazine. Oh, do you? Yeah. First things. Yeah. Well, I'd never heard of it until yeah. I, this. This. Oh. Well, I've told you about it before, but you Have didn't you? remember. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My my memory. <laughs> <laughs> so you you've, you've asked me in the past what I read, and the, the, the only two magazines I really read regularly are First Things and Christianity Today. Okay. And it's a Catholic. You don't read Camping World. No. Or, or no. Outdoors. No, I. I, I no, I don't. I just <laughs> I just read the first things in Christianity Today, and it's All a right. Catholic magazine, but very uh, conservative culturally, and uh, well, has this, a lot of good articles. This article was really good, and one of the things that I enjoyed here, he speaks about the strangeness of how God gives, and um, particularly in, con in in the context at our church, where on Wednesday night, uh, one of our deacons has been teaching through the Book of Job. And um, there's some really good thoughts there. So anyway, wait, Kent Dunnington, Gratitude and the Asbury Revival. If folks want to want to read that, I'd recommend it as a good read. And Steve's recommending the First magazine. Things, yeah. yeah. So so uh, would you uh, now that you've give we we have Steve's endorsement on that? Would you give the phone number out again? Yes, nine one five seven seven nine zero zero one six. All right. Let me take a look over here at my high tech telephone board and uh, there's no lights lit up here Kenny so let's take a break and give folks a chance to call but also I want to appeal to you uh, to plead to urge conjole beg encourage uh, I won but <laughs> uh, you folks go you got one more go ahead no, I, I hate having the last word no you you enjoy having the last word <laughs> Anyway, folks, give us a call here. We want your prayer request or Bible questions. And whatever you bring to the table ends up elevating Jesus and ministering to his 
people. So don't hesitate to help. We'll be back in a moment with more prayer and answers. This is Max Lucado. I've got a few questions for Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus. And my first would be about Bethlehem. I see Joseph animated, pacing, head shaking one minute, fist shaking the next. This isn't what he had in mind. I wonder what he said that night in Bethlehem. You've stood where Joseph stood. You've done what God told you to do only to wonder if it was God speaking in the first place. And you've asked what Joseph asked. You've asked if you're still on the right road. If you're asking what Joseph asked, can I just urge you to do what Joseph did? Obey. Just like Joseph, your task is to see that Jesus is brought into part of your world. And just like Joseph, you have a choice to obey or disobey. Because Joseph obeyed, God used him to change the world. Can he do the same with you? This is Max Locato. We all have the ability to touch the lives of those around us. To someone going through a difficult time, a text, a call, or a visit can mean so much. Reach out to the veterans in your life today. Let them know they're not alone. One simple act can make all the difference. That's the power of one. If you're a veteran in crisis or no one who is, visit VeteransCrisisLine.net for free 24-7 confidential support. In many countries around the world, medical care is scarce. Countless millions have no access to safe surgery. Mercy Ships is there to help. Mercy Ships provides free surgeries for the thousands of those who are waiting for surgery at each port. Mercy Ships is bringing services to countries that would otherwise never be able to access those services. Find out how you can help by visiting our website at mercyships.org. That's mercyships.org. And we are back with more prayer and answers. Phone number here, 915-779-0016. And if you call in, you're first in line. There's no waiting. And uh, and we really don't want the end there to be silence on the on the radio. Oh, you're we? not supposed to do that. No, that's that's not a good thing. It makes so, everybody uncomfortable. Yeah. So, uh, but you, you like to make people uncomfortable well, once in a while, don't you, Randy? Wow, well, you're going to give people the wrong impression of me. But yes, I do. Yes, there are times that I just kind of like looking at them uh, and my eyes saying to them, you know. Go over in your head what you just said. Did you just really say that out loud? <laughs> no. so, but yeah. But I also do want to um, get to the heart of issues, and, and yes. we tend to we tend to put up you know shields and and uh, barriers and try to protect our our integrity. And meanwhile, the the truth of the matter is, uh, um, humility is something that is so needed. If a person wants to draw close to God. They're going to have to have humility. Um, uh, in fact, let me read this Bible verse. I uh, I had it memorized, but you've already mentioned my memory, <laughs> so I'm going to read it to make sure I don't mess it up. Because every time I try to, I mess it up. But listen closely to these words: Isaiah 57:15. Uh, For thus says the one who is high and lifted up. Oh, let's pause for a moment. Who is this one who's high and lifted up that the Bible's talking about, Steve? That's God. God himself, yeah. yeah. Who inhabits eternity. Wow, that, who inhabits inter- eternity. Those three words blow my mind. How big is eternity? And he fills it up. He inhabits, he dwells, he lives, exists, I don't know what words you want to use, in eternity. And then the next uh, four words is whose name is holy. And so there you have this transcendent God that is far above the galaxies and so far out of our reach. But the next words of the prophet have, have this God speaking. God says, I dwell in a high and holy place. I do live there. I dwell in a high and holy place and also with him who is of a contrite and lowly spirit. He inhabits in eternity, but whenever he finds someone who is humble and who is uh, um, t- 
turning their face towards him no matter how low they are. He comes and he lives with them. And uh, no wonder, I, I, I always think of, when I read this, I think of uh, Jesus standing in front of a multitude in Matthew chapter 5, a multitude of people who are sick and crippled and and him saying these words, blessed are the poor in spirit. He says, I, I, I dwell in a high and holy place also with him who is of a contrite and lowly spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. Who could make up a God like that? You know, when you look at the Greek gods, you know, you've got Apollo and and uh, Roman gods. What well, the Greek gods Zeus? don't even inhabit eternity. No, they inhabit Mount uh, Olympus. Yeah, they, and they're they, just they, like us, only big and strong. That's right. They, and they're kind of like watching the days of our lives, you know, only, only with lightning bolts. And oh, I've never used heard that analogy of you know, <laughs> <laughs> using a soap opera. <laughs> to cook. Yeah, well, you know, Greek, but the, isn't it one giant soap opera? Yeah. You know, Zeus well, comes down to true. Earth, and he yeah. has all of these, you know, demigods, yeah. and they're all, you know. Yeah, and they do all uh, sorts of uh, immoral things. Yeah. Yeah, or maybe I've watched too many Hercules shows. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, who could make up? Uh, the God that is revealed by Holy Scripture. There is no one like him. And so... Uh, she's listening. She's feeding her mom, so she couldn't stay on the phone. Okay, Steve, here's a, well, here's a wonderful question. I'm going to let you handle this. Oh, gee, thank you. <laughs> you clear the field <laughs> first. Um, she, uh, you probably just heard Kenny when he walked in. It says that uh, she's listening, um, but uh, she's feeding her mom right now. Who are the two witnesses in the book of Revelation? Okay. Which chapter are we in? Uh, she, she doesn't say, and I don't remember off the top of my head. You, I you, don't either. You wanna, okay. So. All right, so I'll kind of set the... I think it's well, somewhere around Revelation 11, isn't it? I, and I, 12 was on my head, but you okay. may be right. Um, I'll kind of set the stage. The Bible speaks of these uh, two witnesses that... Uh, come and preach, and uh, they're, they're, no one can kill them, no one can hurt them, and 13. Okay. Uh, they, um, and they have uh, flames coming out of their mouth that consumes their enemies, and then it, at one point they're overcome and they're killed, and then there's a big party uh, for, I think, three days, and at the end of the three days, suddenly they stand up and, and uh, they ascend into heaven. So We're in 13. Um, verse 11? Yeah. Okay. All righty. Let's, let's start in. there. <clears throat> okay. So uh, ch uh, Revelation uh, th uh, 13, 11. Then I saw another uh, beast rising out of the earth. It had uh, two horns like a lamb and it spoke like a dragon. It exercises the authority of the first beast in the presence and makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose mortal wound was healed it performs great signs um and does those uh, signs yeah um is that what she's referring to yeah so what i want you to do is you you'll go ahead and clear the field and then okay. and then i'll kick the ball through the goal and that way i get the glory so go ahead <laughs> Are you want me to clear the field what do you want to do here that just didn't like the terminology there <laughs> okay. so um it's a soccer community yeah so, so okay. Uh, but it, but it it wasn't humble. No, that's true. That's true. So weren't you just talking yes, about I humility? Yes, I was. Thank you. I am chastised. Yes. Okay, so we have a beast, and he's rising out of the earth, and he had two horns. And then um, he performs great signs, um, and it was allowed to uh, uh, give breath to the image of the beast. And so there's the second beast, and it's, and it's right there. Okay? So th this whole section— you, it gets difficult to answer the question because there's going to be all sorts of difficult, uh, different viewpoints as to what it ref is referring to. Let me make a statement right there. Okay. So you pass to me, and then I'll pass it back to you. Okay. It doesn't say who they are. But right. It's a vital piece of information. It doesn't say who they are. And so, as Steve said, there's a great deal of yeah. speculation. And here's the, the greatest problem. We don't know when this is. And we don't know how, whether it's literal or figurative. 
and how literal is the beast and how figurative is the beast is it referring to something that's already happened in history does is it referring to something that will happen uh, in in the future of history but before the second coming what would happen right at the second coming um, is it happening right before the end times we have no idea and i will now want to kind of speak to that Yes. Sometimes when people go, oh, he's talking figuratively, they're going, well, that means it doesn't happen. No, it literally happens. It's just we don't know. I mean, we're absolutely saying this is going to happen or it has happened. But we're saying that it's it's not an actual beast. The beast yeah. is, represents something. So it, it, we're not saying, so I think that was a very good point. So we're not saying it's not historical. Mm -hmm. It will happen we're, or uh, has happened. But when John is describing things... Can I give them a quick object lesson? Yep. Can, so here's, here's the way I, I understand the book of Revelation. I go all the way it, to the beginning of the book of Revelation, and it tells me some things, okay? So if we have a, a couple minutes here, uh, look up a Revelation uh, chapter 1, verse 1, okay? The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants the things that must soon take place. Okay? He made it known by sending his angel to a servant, John, who bore witness to the work, word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay? So the word uh, uh, made known um, is, is a word that communicates uh, uh, symbols. Signs. Yeah. Signs. He, he signaled yes. through signs, through figurative language. Right. The book of Revelation is not exclusively, but primarily figurative language. So if I may, Steve and I are not literally playing soccer in here right now in the control room. But we are passing this back and forth. I said, would you clear the field? And then I'll punch it through the goal. Something is going to happen here, but we're not playing soccer. <laughs> okay, right? So that's kind of what this is saying. It's, it's, it's figurative as in it means something, absolutely. But it may not be a literal mountain yeah. falling in the sea or and, a little and so there, star. There are, there are mounds of churches and a lot of people grow up and have heard preachers be very literal about most of the book of Revelation. And so when, when, when we say it's not necessarily literal, it, it, it is very difficult for many people who grew up yeah. uh, with, with the whole concept that the book of Revelation is to be literally interpreted. And let me emphasize a word there that you just used. You said it is not necessarily literal. You're right. not saying that it's not. it's not. You're saying it's not necessarily, which, which was the point I was making. Since it doesn't say, here are the two witnesses, Bob and Tom, um, then there's a great deal of speculation, and that's fine. And, and then we're talking about beasts here. So are beasts literal beasts? Do they have these uh, horns, uh, these ten horns on them, literally, or is it representative of something? Right. And is the beast representative of something evil? Right. And sometimes it, it's a word picture that you find in the Old Testament. <clears throat> I don't know exactly in this one because I don't remember specifically, but many times you see the same word pictures so, in the Old Testament. Yeah, so there's two other places here in the book of Revelation that is going to talk about this beast, and it uses the same numbers. It will talk about it having uh, the four faces. It'll talk about it having seven hills. It'll talk about it having ten horns. And in the book of Daniel, chapter 7, when he does the image of the, with the, with the, the statue and the, you have the four you have the four kingdoms and you have seven hills and you have ten horns, that these numbers all mean something uh, in the Bible. Uh, that John is using some Old Testament prophecy languages here. So to, to, to boil all of that down now, here are the options. Here are just the two major options that various Christian, spirit-filled people believe in. One of them is that this is all future, meaning all in our future, and that these two people 
are two actual people, and it is speculated that they are Moses and Elijah. Uh, many people speculate that, um, and that they, they come and they, uh, they preach. Others speculate that it is Enoch and Elijah, because these are two that the Bible, we don't, that we don't have a death for them. And so some speculate that it's Enoch and Elijah somewhere in our future during the seven-year tribulation. So that is one point of view, uh, uh, and that's uh, um, a, a pretty, uh, that's a majority view in the United States of America for the last 30 years, maybe 40 years. The other view, uh, which would be like before the 40 years, and, and a good portion of the church today believes that these two witnesses are the Old Testament and the New Testament, and that they're testifying, they're preaching throughout all of human history. Um, and so that, that is a, a very popular view as well. So I think those are the two predominant views. Is there another one you can think of, Steve? There's all sorts all, all over the That board. are really major. No, okay. I mean thing. it's either Enoch and Elijah in a, in the in a future seven year yeah, trip. But just period. just think about the concept of, of of what a witness does. Right, and if you don't have a time frame for when he does it or what he's what he's dealing with, then it's very difficult to yeah. to draw that conclusion. And so um, the the other idea that's not it's it's you know the second idea I mentioned is that this is not talking about a seven year period in our future, but it's talking about through the entire human history between Jesus' first coming and his second coming. You have the witness of the Old Testament and the New Testament both preaching and declaring Christ as Savior. And at the end of this age, when Satan is released at the end of this age, um, and he begins deceiving the nations. That testimony is going to be killed for a period of time, but then at the very, very end of the age, suddenly it is revived, and there is a great revival, and then Christ comes. So those are, those are the two predominant views, and I hope that answers your question. Yeah, and, and, and so it, it, when you ask book questions on the book of Revelation, it's always going to be, um, for many of us who, who lack the certainty that some people have, mm -hmm. um, it's always going to be, uh, there will always be different perspectives depending on how you interpret right. literally or figuratively. Uh, if you want to know more about the second view, the book by Sam Storm, uh, uh, Thy Kingdom Come, is, goes into great detail. And so that's one to look at. And then it's very easy to find books on the first view. I'm trying to, can you think of a... a, a well, you a have John Walford. Premillennial, there you go, John Walford, yeah. Yeah, and um, uh, anybody from Dallas Seminary. Anybody from Dallas, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who's the guy in San Antonio um, that's always preaching? I'm trying to remember his name. Max, H oh, oh, John Hagee. John well, Hagee. He's, he's Hagee. a weird combination well, of charismatic and... and uh, and uh, dispensationalist. Well, that's okay. Sam Storm's a weird combination of charismatic and Calvinism. Yeah. So you get, you get, you get there's your spectrums. Go enjoy and read and learn. So, uh, Kenny, do I have any other phone calls right now? No, let's take a break. Okay, Kenny says he wants to take a break. So, would you give the phone number, Steve? Yes, it's 915 779 We'll be back in a moment with more prayer and answers. We can. Magazine, this is John MacArthur with another edition of Portraits of Grace. Praise the Lord is a common expression today. Some see it as a catchy slogan, others commercialize it, still others reduce it to nothing more than PTL. But despite such attempts to trivialize it, praising the Lord remains the believer's expression of love and gratitude to God. And God desires and deserves your praise. That's why Hebrews 13, 15 says, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that give thanks to His name. Praise involves reciting God's attributes and works, giving Him honor and reverence for who He is and for what He has done for His people. May your praise follow that same pattern. This is John MacArthur looking forward to bringing you more Portraits of Grace. I was facing foreclosure, and they guaranteed they would get my loan modified. I paid them a fee and never heard from them again. Anyone can be a victim of a loan modification scam, but you don't have to be. 
Know the signs. Get the facts. Visit www.loanscamalert.org. For trusted government-approved help and a reporter scam, call 1-888-995-HOPE. That's 1-888-995-4673. Every day, we go about our lives driven by routine. Our vision clouded by the very normalcy we take for granted. Countless victims of human trafficking walk among us, invisible. It's time to open our eyes. The Blue Campaign provides a unified voice for those who combat human trafficking, whether it's forced labor, domestic servitude, or the sex trade. Learn what you can do to help by visiting dhs.gov slash blue campaign. And we are back with more prayer and answers. Um, you know, I wanted to share something that happened last week after the show. Somebody called right after the show. Kenny, do you remember her name? She's called in a few times for prayer, and I can't remember her name either. I'm so sorry. As Steve said, my memory is horrible. But is, was it Katie? Anyway, she had, um, she had called more than once. She had been struggling with some anxiety because of medication that had been given to her, and, and, and it was horrible what it had done to her. And she called for prayer and more than once, and she called last week. Uh, right after the show was over, just to report that God had completely and totally healed her. And um, I was very pleased. I asked her if she would call in again this week and share it with the with the audience. But um, and I maybe she would later. I don't know. But I just wanted our audience to hear you. You pray with us when we're praying for someone. And here's a here's a daughter of Christ that. Um, that, that reached out to the church uh, in El Paso, meaning the, the body of believers in El Paso who prayed for her. And God heard our prayers, your prayers, and delivered her. And so uh, take that as an encouragement, please. First of all, for those of you who actually did pray for her when, when Steve and I prayed, uh, how wonderful to know that your prayers are heard. And we know that if our prayers are heard, that he will definitely answer. And the second uh, thing is, for those of you who have um, issues, and who doesn't, um, that you can call, and prayer is effective, as Steve said earlier. And uh, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. We've got about 30 more minutes here, and it's up to you whether you're going to be a have not, ask not. Well, you got 20 minutes, uh, Kenny says. Will you be a have not, ask not, ask not, have not, or ask and have <laughs> and so I'm going to give you the phone number so you'll at least have that 915-779-0016 and then uh, I really encourage you to call in with your prayer request and and another uh, part of that and we were talking about humility earlier um, it does take uh, some humility to confess to admit that you have a problem um, <laughs> but it shouldn't because I, Steve, do you know anybody that doesn't have a problem? I mean, you and I could spend the whole hour presenting the things that you and I need prayer for. Absolutely. And we don't, not because we're trying to present that we don't have uh, health issues. Uh, both of us are sitting here in pain, um, and Kenny's over there in pain. Uh, we just don't want to take up your hour <laughs> with, with, our, with our health issues and, and, the, and, and our needs for provision. Uh, we're we're here to minister and to serve you, but don't take that as oh these guys don't have any problems. Um, yep. So the, the, I was sharing with you before the the uh, program that uh, we have a uh, someone who works with me, mm -hmm. and, I, 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 and because I didn't get permission, right. I'm not going to say a name, uh, but they discovered a, a, a mass in her uterus, right? And um, she's a fairly young lady. And um, apparently, she said it runs in the family. But um, can you imagine it how just, it just it did, she was just devastated? Yeah. And, I, and I, w I was with her right after she heard, and she came and you know she was doing something. I said hi to her. She was just weeping. Yeah. And uh, so we prayed together. But it's uh, it's it's tough. Yeah. And then but they said that they caught it early, and that they caught it at a good time if they were if she was going to get it. So we'll pray for. We'll pray for her in just a moment, and let's just make up a name. Let's use the name Margaret, okay? okay. And um, it reminds me of years ago, 
uh, there was a there was, I, I know of a wonderful dear dear sweet daughter of Christ a wonderful saint and devoted her life to missions her and her husband and her husband and it ended up uh, dying from Alzheimer's and in her later years she was married again God gave her a new husband and they're so happy together and I still remember uh, when they came to me and, and said uh, we just got the diagnosis that, uh, that, that my husband has uh, pancreatic cancer now, now she's a strong woman of the Lord but when the news first hit of course fear coursed through her uh, and I remember her um, uh, getting control of herself and going, however, I know that, that God is with us and God is good and this, that, that whatever happens here, um, uh, we're going to be okay and, and God will use it for his glory. And we began to pray. And, and of course, uh, medicine and prayer, through medicine and prayer, he was completely healed of his cancer and the Lord honored her faith and and did not now take this second husband away from her so um, we're, we're, we're saying all of this we're going to pray for this woman we're calling Margaret but as we're praying for her it may as well be you so Steve you want to lift her up sure. in prayer uh, yes Lord um we just uh, want to intercede and, and ask you to be at work, Lord, in, in Margaret's life. We, we want to pray in, in Jesus' name that as she takes up this news and she just received it, as she talks about it with her husband and children, and as uh, you uh, work in her life, we pray that you would give her peace and comfort. And we pray that as you give the doctors wisdom and, and apparently the doctor had very encouraging words for her, that you would bring healing and grace and mercy and that you would flood her with a sense of your presence. And we pray, Lord, she's a very sweet and, and, and precious young lady. May you, may, you, may you touch her heart in life and, and just uh, help her. May you help her husband. And may you help the family be supportive. And may we see your work of healing occur in whatever way that you ordain it. And just extend your grace to that family and to, to, to Margaret. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we do have another caller. Good afternoon. Welcome to Prayer and Dancers. Good afternoon, Randy and Steve. And is this, I can never tell if it's you or your mother. Oh, that is <laughs> or so you funny. Your daughter. It, 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 it's, it's the Oklahoma one. Okay, all right. What's, <laughs> what's on your mind today, Texas? Well, my question is, we do an Apostles' Creed yeah. at our Methodist church, and when it says, uh, and he descended into hell and on the third day rose again. Yeah. Well, they have taken that out. Hmm. And so I, a mother one time said, you know, I find that so interesting. And of course I do too. But so that is my question. Mm. Did, did Jesus descend into hell? Well, that's a great question. So this time I'll clear the field and let Steve punch through the goal. But uh, first of all, I have to ask you a question about your church. Okay. The last time I talked yes, to you, I was very concerned. You had said that they were going to be voting about whether yes. to stay. And I thought I saw that many Oklahoma churches were leaving um, over the gay marriage issue. What did your church decide to do? Well, what is so interesting, Randy, is that our bishop and, and that council postponed that vote, which of course I was down in El Paso celebrating mom's birthday, so I was going to miss it. If you were gone, you missed it. Mm. But they postponed it to see if our church was viable to the community and some such jargon. So we did our own vote, I guess a couple weeks later, because you know this has been quite an yeah. ordeal. Yeah. So we did our own vote in our church, and we voted to leave 
So they are having talks as we see oh, where the bishop and them are going, okay, you know what, and we're asking what determines if our church is a viable bit for the downtown community. It's really, really uh, weird, but we voted to uh, uh, to leave. Right, so we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. So first I'm going to pray about that issue and then we'll handle yeah, your question, thank okay? You. Father, thank in you, the name you. of Jesus, I want to thank you that you have a church downtown. That is wanting. That is wanting uh, to obey yeah. you and to seek you. Amen. Amen. And I pray also, Father, that you would just first of all fill the hearts of your individual believers in that church. Uh, your Son has taught us that the adversary will plant seeds right next to the seeds that you plant, and so not everybody in the church is saved. But for those who are born again, Lord, I pray that you would fill them with their with your Holy Spirit and that they would be strong and there would be no question of viability, but that your presence would live in them right there in that place and they would be powerful and effective at advancing the kingdom in such a needed area. I ask that you would also honor and reward those who are standing for your truths and your principles. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Randy. So the question, first of all, let us uh, let us begin with this. The Apostles' Creed is not Holy Scripture. Okay? Okay. Okay. So it's not, you know, something like, oh, they're taking this verse out of the Bible. Okay? Okay. Okay. Yes, yes. Having said that, it is derived from Holy Scripture, and it is ancient, and it has been there in order to identify what true Christianity is. It's been there for the first century. That's why it's called the Apostles' Creed. Okay. And so when they use the word hell, they're not talking about the lake of fire, and they're not talking about the place where the eternally damned will spend eternity. They're talking about the realm of the dead. They're talking okay. about the grave, but when we say the grave, we're not just saying, you know, the cave that his body was laid in. Uh, you you have this realm of the dead that, that when when the, the spirit leaves a human body, it goes somewhere. And right. so through okay. whether it's in whether it's in Judaism or whether it's in paganism or Christianity, there is this common thought that the dead go somewhere. Now Jesus tells a parable about a rich man and Lazarus, and we see him talking about this realm where the dead are, and it's divided into two places. There's a place called Abraham's bosom, and then there's the, the other place, which is this uh, horrible place of torment. So that's... Is, is it Sheol? I mean, is that so a So that's one of the... Ge Gehenna and Sheol are the two, and, you know, two terms. And so, so Gehenna is, is, is the reference point here. Yeah, Gehenna. So he did not go to the place where the lost... He did not go to the, the place of torment. And the reason why they're okay. taking it out of the Apostle Creed is because when we use the word hell, it makes it sound like Jesus got cast into hell. Yeah, where, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, so, who, who, can, I, can I ask who's taking it out of the Creed? She's saying the UMC. Oh, the okay, so there might be another motivation there. So it might not just be uh, just because it's a place of the dead and... and, and the, 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 it might just be because they don't believe in the concept of hell. It's possible if you, they're getting so progressive that they could be yeah. coming so actually it's UM, So if it's UMC and then they're they're the gay marriage folks. Um, well, dear one, not our church. So no, I'm, I'm, I'm no. interested yeah. that our our that we are doing that like that. So interesting, but our church is believes in the the word, and and that's why again we're. So you we're, could you could ask them why they take it out, but yeah, that's and, a good and question. All you have to do is yes, change word. the word hell to he descended into the grave or the place of the oh. dead or the place of the okay. dead. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 But, but he he went somewhere and preached. <laughs> Okay, because yeah, that's what it says in First what, Peter chapter yeah, three. That's what it says. He went. If now, he where is that the, again? Chapter three. Yeah, where did you say? First Peter chapter three. Yeah. And he preaches to, to the he, spirits in prison. Yeah. Okay. And that's a you, whole other. And that's a. And there's so many views on that. Um, Oh, yeah. I looked up a commentary, and there was like seven views. Was there? Yeah. Wow. And um, Well, they should just ask me. No. Well, there you go. <laughs> there's that humility coming out again. I'm struggling today, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, first, he says at the beginning of the show, Taxi, that you were supposed to be humble, and then he's, yeah, he's not be being humble. <laughs> he 
can't help himself. No, Steve. Can't. I, I, that's I, why you're there. We've he, got it. We've got to help him. I had, I had, I had committed myself to no jokes today, and so here's what's oh, coming out instead. See? Yeah. Oh, there you go. All right. Well, if you got the verse, Steve, let's get off of me. Okay. Let's talk. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's start with chapter three, verse eighteen. Christ also suffered once for sin. Uh, well. Once for sin, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed uh, to the spirits in prison, uh, wow. because they formerly did not obey um, when God's patience waited uh, in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, and then he shifts off to baptism um, and discusses that. Here's, and here's the exciting thing about this, one of the views, and okay, I'll just go ahead and say my, my personal, the one I think, that, that he, he also blew open the doors of the grave and led out all of those who were in Abraham's bosom. He led them out to be with him, and they are sitting on thrones reigning with him right now in his kingdom, okay? Isn't that wow, awesome? I love it. Yeah. That is awesome. So even that, even awesome. that three days, he wasn't resting. He was at work yeah. accomplishing oh, the Father's course. will, okay? Yes. I got so another exciting. call, Thank Texie. You. Thank you so much, All right. you guys. God bye bless. Bye-bye. Good afternoon, Virginia. Welcome to Prayer and Answers. <laughs> Good afternoon, you um, Something that's a little bit perplexing, but... In the part where Absalom um, rebels mm -hmm. against um, King David and, and tries to undermine yeah. his um, his reign and everything, would there not be any kind of forgiveness for him? You know, uh -huh. they, they, they kill him, and then they throw him in a pit, I think, and then yeah. and then rocks on top. Yeah. But first of all, I'm really proud of you. Every week you call with a Bible question that lets me, gives me the indication that you're actually reading your Bible. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, good girl. I, I'm following uh, <laughs> Chuck Smith. Okay. All right. So... Absalom is killed. He's he's uh, he's led a rebellion against David, <clears throat> and in but fact, the Lord always spoke about forgiveness. Yeah. So, um, is Absalom in hell or in heaven right now? Well, did he say sorry to the Lord? Don't know, do we? He was hanging in a tree by his hair with spears coming at him. So he yes. might have very quickly said, oops. Sorry. Sorry, Lord. <laughs> yeah. So we don't know, do we? And this is the thing. When you're looking at scriptures and it says that the person uh, died, it does not mean necessarily. Like, for instance, is Pharaoh? Pharaoh could have been in the middle of the sea. And the, and the waves closing in on him, and with his last thought, he goes, oh, I get it now, you're God, and I'm not. Mm -hmm. So we don't know, do we? Yeah. Now, yeah, we do. the other thing is, David was not the one who killed him, and David was not the one who buried him, but David's general, was it Abner, Steve? Was it, yes. Or jo it was Abner, right? Yeah, kind of, he had okay. several, but I think Abner, Abner was the last one. Ab okay, so Abner is the one who does it. In fact, David would not have killed his son and if if and David he was had, trying to prevent that actually yeah, yeah. And, and if David had had been there the nation might have been split right then God's purposes you know hampered um, so Abner did what Abner needed to do and then finally there is a warning here do you remember the story have you read the story in the Bible about Elisha coming into a village and some kids start mocking him and calling him bald head and then a bear comes out and mauls 42 of them have you heard that story you know i remember a little bit yeah this this uh, elisha uh, basically speaks a curse on him and this bear comes out and mauls 42 of them and and people are like wow was elisha having a bad day well it's not that it's that elisha is god's voice to the nation and if he had allowed that disrespect, it wasn't a disrespect to God, it was a disrespect to God's mouth. I mean, not a disrespect to Elisha, it was a disrespect to God's anointed, his mouth. If that had stood, um, no one would have ever listened 
to anything God said, and multitudes would have perished. And so it seems harsh, you know, that this bear does this, but it, it is establishing, hey, this is my man, listen to him. Well, David was the Lord's anointed. And whereas David refused to touch Saul because Saul had been the Lord's anointed, and that's right, he did. Absalom goes after the Lord's anointed. And so this punishment um, is, is a message to everyone. Uh, when they see what happens to Absalom, you don't touch the Lord's anointed. Okay? Yeah. That's what Benny Hinn used to say. Oh, I don't want to hear about him. <laughs> don't do that. Me neither. <laughs> okay, so now now you're going to get our dander up. <laughs> she got me <laughs> there, 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 so My stomach just uh, dropped. Uh, Benny Hinn is, 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 is anointed as um, a squirrel. Well, I was going to say maybe anointed as a false prophet, and that yeah. means not anointed by God. Yeah. Yeah, okay. definitely. Yeah, maybe I, I'm I, being I, harsh with squirrels. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Steve's on a roll today. Anyway, yeah. Virginia, what a wonderful question. And so take that away with you. And when I'm talking about the Lord's anointed then, I'm not talking about every preacher that's standing in a pulpit no. somewhere. Okay. No, because they they can be false prophets. Exactly. And, uh, and, and, uh, but I am, you know, how you deal with Christ, this is why, and, and how you deal with the Holy Spirit which is the anointing, you know, the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Uh, God is a God of, of mercy and wonder and grace and forgiveness and, you know, his generosity is, goes forever, but there is a line. And you, mm -hmm. you, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And so it's a, I'm yeah. glad those stories are in there to remind us, walk carefully, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the last part of Psalms chapter 2, and we'll end the show with this, Virginia. Uh, I love this. Um, it says, therefore be wise, or therefore be warned, you kings, be wise, you rulers of the earth. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry with you and you perish in the way, for his wrath can flare up in a moment. The fear of the Lord then, of course, Virginia, is so important, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you for calling. And... Uh, that's it for this edition of Prayer and Answers. Thank you for all of our calls, and we'll see you next week at The Lord Terry's. Thank you for listening to Prayer and Answers, presented each Saturday afternoon at 1.30. Tune in again next week at this same time for Prayer and Answers. Jesus is the